Of all the creative industries to work in, game development has one of the longest turnarounds. Where your average high-end movie takes around two years from filming to being in theatres, and TV shows can be done in around nine months, the average time for game development is three to five years. Yes, this applies far more to the likes of God of War, Spider-Man or The Last of Us, runaway success Fall Guys looks to have been turned around in less than a year, but the point stands, you're nearly always going to be dropping something into a world that's different to the one you're planning in. Game mechanics, script writing, trying to make something that feels of the now can be nigh on impossible if you're trying to guess what the now will be in many years time. That is where things can totally backfire. I'm Scott from WhatCulture.com and these are 10 video games that were outdated before they launched. Number 10, Radical Heights. One of the most rushed developments in arguably gaming history, Radical Heights was the last ditch effort at staying afloat from ex-Gears of War creator Cliff Blazinski in 2018. Coming after Lawbreakers spectacularly missed the mark thanks to being in the shadow of Overwatch, something that's happened to many, many titles, Cliffy and his team pivoted into the Hail Mary that was an 80s themed battle royale. Because what else were you going to do in 2018? Now, this was before the overall push towards 80s ephemera that we're currently in the middle of, but a baseline battle royale? Radical Heights was following Fortnite and PUBG at the height of their initial popularity. The game just didn't stand a chance, and Cliffy would announce his retirement from game design for the foreseeable future. Number 9, Assassin's Creed Rogue. At the worst of Ubisoft's factory line approach to Assassin's Creed was one year where we got two installments instead of one. That year was 2014, the same year as Assassin's Creed Unity, i.e. the game that broke the franchise. While Unity failed at convincing anyone that the next generation started here, it did have the knock-on effect of showcasing just how much Ubisoft were re-releasing the same content over and over. Rogue was a surprisingly good game, story and character-wise, but Ubi had already released Black Flag and Freedom Cry as a standalone title. To go back to the well on Assassin's Creed meets ship combat yet again only made Rogue feel long in the tooth, especially compared to the potential of its next-gen counterpart. Number 8, Rocket Arena. Overwatch is like some heavyweight champion with a knockout haymaker so powerful, they barely need to put any power behind it to remain on top. So many titles from the aforementioned Lawbreakers to Battleborn have tried to get into the hero shooter market, only for a quick comparison to Overwatch to bury them for good. Step forward, Rocket Arena, EA's attempt at cartoonifying arena combat, where the quote-unquote unique hook is just rocket jumping. Besides not really being a popular mechanic since 2007, and long before then if you trace it back to Doom and Quake, Rocket Arena's cardinal sin was thinking that you can charge any money for a hyper-animated shooter and assume that people will pay. Simply put, we've been spoiled by Fortnite. Epic's free-to-play behemoth set the standard for colourful titles that monetize their audience after you've had a handful of matches, and Rocket Arena releasing for £30 only saw a reduction to £5 within the first week. Clearly, the damage was done beforehand though, as a quick check of player numbers on Steam will tell you that only 50 people are playing at any one time. Number 7, Godfall. In pure corporate game think, Godfall makes perfect sense. You can easily see a boardroom of number crunchers analysing trends, only to drag and drop Dark Souls with loot grind into the same column and break for lunch. Honestly, Godfall doesn't look terrible, it just looks stale. Everybody watching the footage knows exactly how it's going to play, exactly how much time you'll have to put in, how tedious loot grinds will be, and how bosses will be based around hitting with higher damage numbers rather than requiring skill. As we go into the next generation and so many companies have moved on from loot grinds, a byproduct of loot boxes being the go-to way to monetize anything, Godfall finds itself releasing to an audience that simply doesn't respond to this structure anymore. Number 6, Borderlands 3. After a ludicrously long 7 year wait between numbered installments, Borderlands 3 finally dropped in 2019. The king of the first person loot shooter and progenitor of various mission structures and frameworks the likes of Destiny would build a reputation on, many expected Borderlands to reclaim its crown and show the competition how it's done. Instead, it was categorically more of the same. Now, don't get me wrong, Gearbox adding knee slides and a weightier feel to gunplay modernized Borderlands to be more in line with Titanfall or New Age Call of Duty, but this was the same basic game you'd been playing for years given a new coat of paint. Even worse was Borderlands 3's sense of humor, which took a massive step back from the sharp delivery of someone like Handsome Jack, embracing toilet humor and faux Rick and Morty randomness that grated on longtime fans. Some jokes landed, others felt about five years out of date. Number 5, The Last Guardian. 
Not all the games here are bad. In fact, I would champion The Last Guardian as featuring one of the best animal AIs in gaming history, nailing the wandering whims of a cat alongside the earned loyalty of a canine by the end. It's also a heartwarming tale of two prisoners, yourself and Trico the Beast, bonding as you escape a strange archaic prison of obstacles and traps. However, by sheer virtue of the game being stuck in development hell for 10 years, it was originally supposed to drop in 2011, having been announced in 2009, when we finally played The Last Guardian in 2016, many noticed way too many similarities to both Eco and Shadow of the Colossus. Obviously, part of this is intentional. The game is the final part of a tangentially connected trilogy, but a lot came from such a long production cycle, meaning these assets were first conceived many years prior. Outdated texture work and character models were front and center, with a super repetitive tile set making up the majority of stonework everywhere else. As mentioned, I totally championed the game, but there's no denying it would have made way more sense if Sony could have stuck to that original launch window. Number four, Agents of Mayhem. The epitome of everything wrong with MMORPG components being bolted onto genres they rarely belong in, Agents of Mayhem was a corporate bland fest that committed every gaming sin imaginable. Grinding out loot to make the numbers go up? Check. Overly peppy, that was awesome style scriptwriting for the masses? Check. An uber repetitive combat model that elongates and bloats any sense of progression? Check. You'd be grinding to unlock upgrade points, core abilities, skins, weapon schematics, and more. Grinding to unlock multiple currencies only for them to alter everything from meter burn times to the radius of your grenades. In other words, like Insomniac's Fuse that was focus tested to death by EA, there was no soul, passion, or charm here. Only a drawn out set of base mechanics yet again trying to cash in on the Destiny crowd. Number three, Marvel's Avengers. Speaking of trying to cash in on the Destiny crowd, Square Enix and Crystal Dynamics' take on the Avengers IP is one of the most money-hungry ventures in quite some time. Aiming to fold sponsorship deals with everyone from Verizon to Virgin Media, even Wrigley's gum, the game's overarching progression centers on grinding out stats and numerics to make your heroes as powerful as possible. There's an intriguing enough story stitching together a number of missions, but the majority of gameplay sees you and three AIs or other players rerunning missions multiple times, mashing waves of enemies forevermore. It's here where the Anthem or 2014 Destiny comparisons come thick and fast, as mission objectives revolve around pushing buttons, destroying objects, defending certain points while meters fill up, or attacking a specific enemy, all while opening chests for crafting components. Put simply, it's boring and unoriginal as hell, and does a massive disservice to the immaculate animation and production value on display everywhere else. Simply down to what feels like more corporate interference, like how Square Enix forced Eidos to implement the microtransaction-filled breach mode in Deus Ex Mankind Divided, Avengers' worthwhile qualities are drowning in a sea of seen-it-before slop. Oh, and let's not forget, Avengers may have forgone loot boxes, but you can pay your way through its character-specific unlock tiers if you want to bypass the grind. Number 2, Duke Nukem Forever. A game that took a staggering 15 years to develop, shifting studios and scores of creatives in the process, the version of Duke Nukem Forever that dropped in 2011 was straight out of 1996. That meant insanely outdated jokes, a terrible objectifying attitude towards women, game features like throwing your own feces, and a gameplay feel that essentially leapfrogged over a decade's worth of genre advancement. Duke certainly has his fans, and as a self-aware pastiche of 90s action heroes, that's where he works best. Dropping him in 2011 like a thought-out has-been fresh from cryostasis though, there was very little to enjoy even ironically about this final installment. And number one, Anthem. Of course, the top spot is Anthem, because at least the Avengers has a story and great acting to propel you mission to mission. Anthem tragically never honestly looked remotely promising. Once we got eyes on gameplay back in 2017, Bioware's first new IP since 2009's Dragon Age felt like they too were chasing the Destiny trend. No new features, no reason to exist other than a paycheck, we'd later find out this wasn't the case at the beginning of development, but it certainly felt that way once the game was shown off. See, various behind-the-scenes reports revealed that Anthem's lead creatives had departed shortly after the project got moving, leaving those behind to flounder and experiment with what might get this over the finish line. Like I mentioned with Avengers, mission objectives were incredibly one-note, with the core concept of a transforming world, the titular Anthem of Creation, barely being implemented. In the end, Anthem couldn't serve anybody. Its loot pool was minuscule, its flight mechanics destroyed by overheating meters that kicked in after a few seconds. The story saved an engaging plot point for a post credit stinger, and to this day, it doesn't feel like anybody ever wanted to work on this game from front to back. And those are my picks for various video games that totally felt outdated before we actually played them. 
Let me know your own favorites down in the comments below, and please check out the What Culture Gaming podcast. We upload on Tuesdays and Fridays. For now, I've been Scott from WhatCulture.com, and I'll catch you soon.